Well, hello there and welcome to this YouTube video podcast where we'll go over all things AFCB from the weekend after our two-all draw at the hands of Chelsea. Remember, if you want to listen to the full podcast, which includes a Liverpool preview, um, some extra fans reactions and lots more besides, then do subscribe to the pod via your favourite podcast app. So it finished all square at the weekend and Jeff, he's with me once again. And the big question is, Jeff, ha- have you warmed up yet? Yeah, it was a bit chilly yesterday, wasn't it? Uh, it, was, it was freezing. <laughs> it was absolutely freezing. And you know what? It, the match was as topsy-turvy as the weather conditions itself. Yeah, We had sun, rain, uh, well, that biting wind, hail. But it finished on the pitch, at least, with a, bit, with a little bit of calm. Uh, to all, some fans reeling, other fans happy with a point. What was your personal take? I think overall, a draw is probably a fair result. Um, Chelsea outplayed us for large parts of that game. We were good at the start of the first half and good at the start of the second half. But um, yeah, I, I I felt hanging on at two one in the 85th minute. You think we might just do it? We might just do it, and that would have been an amazing result. Um, but if you were watching the game and see the whole 90 minutes, you'll think, yeah, you know, we were hanging on and, um, eventually one of those near misses was going to, going to be too good for us. So it proved. Yeah, that's right. I've got a WhatsApp group with um, Paul Kenwood and Tony, who, of course, you've seen on the YouTube channel. And Paul said that he watched the whole game back and he said on on reflection, yeah, two all was a good point when you look at how much possession they had. 72%, I think they had. Um, But, yeah, I still felt really nervous during the game and I felt disappointed after 90 minutes or after 95 minutes or whatever. And I felt that, that this nervousness that I felt was exactly the same. I haven't felt nervousness during a game for a long time. The last time was during at home. I think it's because I sat in the main stand for this game. So I remembered back to a home match against QPR, who Harry Redknapp was in charge of at the time. And I think we were winning 2-1 or 1-0. And we managed to hang on. But oh, I, I was having kittens. And the feeling that I had, and it was almost like it was going to happen. And then it did happen. Um, and there were many reasons for that, which, of course, we'll discuss. But Team News came out at two o'clock and Lewis Cook was chucked in there which is a surprise to many very much a surprise Sam I think um we've all expected Lewis to be playing more often this season than he has um hasn't had many starts last few weeks certainly um there's been calls for him to be in and he was picked ahead of Gosling this time um so that was interesting to see the other surprises, or maybe not surprises, cooking for Frano, Ake back at the centre half position, which was great. Um, he's obviously decided that uh, Adam Smith at left back is the way to go, with Jack Stacey cementing his position as first choice right back. And then he played King and Fraser, that sort of 4 5 1 setup with Fraser playing on the right, uh, King on the, um, sorry, Fraser. Yeah, Fraser playing on the right, King on the left, which we know Ryan doesn't like playing on the right, but that's the position he was given. So, yeah, you know, a little bit of a surprise. Uh, Chelsea coming off the back of a 3-0 hammering against Bayern Munich without Tammy Abraham playing Giroud up front. You felt that that was probably a team that we could have a go at. Um, They were playing three three centre-halves. Uh, and wing back so um, yeah we, we we looked like we were a team that could cause them some problems going forwards yeah do you think the lack of Harry Wilson was maybe perhaps a side effect of the fact that there's a derby connection there with Frank Lampard and, and maybe a bit of preparation for next week against Liverpool perhaps in playing without him yeah I think um, Harry Wilson obviously can't play next week so uh, there was that and maybe maybe he just felt that King gives us a bit more uh, of a physical presence. I think that's probably what he liked. So, yeah, you know, that that was interesting. And, um, yeah, you know, I was looking forward to it, actually. Really yeah. looking forward to the game. I must admit, I, I uh, was looking at this, like, league table, as I referenced on previous podcasts, about the amount of points we've taken off the top six clubs. And we're up there in the kind of other 14 table. You know, we are quite high. So... I was feeling relatively optimistic about it. Um, and our form has, 
hasn't been too bad really um and you know we did start off really well but there's another couple of things i just want to say before we actually tackle the game itself i noticed that a lot of people online have been saying that there was a new pa system at dean court and it, it, it certainly seemed louder where i was in the main stand you heard mm. some kanye's power being played quite loud but it's quite interesting fletch who was warming up with the substitutes was actually telling mike and zoe um to like to, you know to turn up the volume during like a number of the songs and he was saying come on let's raise it because you know the team the squad sort of needed to be um have this sort of energy flowing through them and certain tracks they were playing obviously you know gave them that little bit of momentum and Frano was also getting very frustrated because the music kept on cutting out like every so often before kickoff as well and he was getting really annoyed so I take it there are teething problems with that system maybe you know Mike Botto might know more about that but you know either way the team did seem motivated because the first 10-15 minutes I thought well the first 10-15 minutes of both halves I thought we were excellent and uh, you know Chelsea didn't seem to touch the ball much in our half I thought we dominated. Yeah, that first 10, 15 minutes, I think they had a hangover from their European game. It was obviously taking a while to get that out of their system. And they weren't really sure exactly what they were doing. We were on the front foot. I thought uh, Billing was excellent in that first 10, 15 minutes and Lerma winning the ball. And we were getting down the sides of them really well. Uh, there was a, a fantastic uh, through ball that... Uh, Fraser played to Stacey, overlapping, pulled it back, and Billing really should have scored. Um, keeper makes a, a decent save, but either side of him, that, that goes in. And then uh, followed that up by uh, Billing Rob's Tamori in the box. He was a little bit undercooked. He hasn't played much this season. And, uh, yeah, um, decides to shoot rather than square it. Bad call, because yeah. he seems to hit it in the only part of the goal where it's never going to cause any problems, which was near post and it hits the side netting. So really disappointing. That was really frustrated. And sometimes I feel like um, we psychologically peak at those moments and we're playing on the front foot, getting those chances in. And it's almost like there's a sort of a wave of disappointment that runs through the side because uh, they're aware, obviously, from previous games that if you're not clinical, then, you know, you're likely to get punished. And we have been in previous games. And whilst we maybe didn't get punished straight away, Chelsea did, you know, grasp the nettle somewhat and they took control of the game playing through the midfield. I thought there were, there were a number of standout players for them. Um, Alonso, obviously, you know, who scored both their goals. But we just seemed to sit back and we didn't really tend to go up the pitch much. It was it was obviously that kind of counter-attacking game where we can soak up the pressure and then hit teams yeah. on the break. But it's all very well doing that. But Chelsea are a quality side. They're very difficult to break down. And when they've got, you know, 10 decent outfield players... Um, that are attacking, they're gonna they're gonna make inroads, and eventually they did. I thought what was really interesting was the way they played out from the back. You know, they they beat our press, which wasn't quite as organised or well drilled as it as perhaps it should have been. A number of times, um, Christensen and Aspilicueta in particular would play the ball between themselves, get the ball wide to uh, Reese James, who then had an option with Jorginho in the middle, and their attack started from there, you know, and that seemed to happen. Those little triangles that they're playing out from the back seemed to happen uh, more and more in that first half. And I'm not sure whether it was Lewis Cook feeling slightly sort of out of it in the middle of the park, um, but there wasn't that sort of sense of communication. And in fact, um, they started to dominate Jorginho in particular I was really impressed with you know got on the ball a lot and was just you know really really positive in linking the play um Reese James as well down the right hand side was getting lots of space and Pedro I thought was uh, was looking sharp too so they began to cause us significant issues stretching our stretching our wingers stretching our midfield and yeah it became problematic as the half went on how does that happen? How does it change from, say, you know, a period on five minutes where we we had this high press and, you know, we managed to recycle the ball and then push them. We had those chances, as you as you alluded to. How does it change so drastically? It's, yeah. it's absolutely bizarre. Yeah, I think I think, like I say, I think they took a while to get their game from Tuesday night out of their system. And clearly they were rusty and a bit off the pace. They had a couple of players who were new into that team um but i felt that they 
they just started moving the the ball with a bit more purpose. I thought Jorginho was really the key. Just started finding space in midfield, linking the play, playing nice little uh, give and goes, yeah. and. Mason forward Mount. passes as well for you know you know the centre midfield is like passing to the strikes like you know playing through the line almost like Andrew Sermon did to Callum um at yeah. Burnley you know albeit that you know that wasn't a goal that was allowed and Andrew Sermon playing a forward pass for once wow but yeah that's the kind of thing that they were doing and I think when you've got players that are talented enough to hold it up and you know give and go you make runs um we were always going to get punished and then we did that low wicked cross came in, well, you know, low-ish, but Giroud, did, you know, did well to get a shot on target there. Yeah. He, he came off the bar and, alas, it fell to Alonso, who, right, I mean, great left foot into the roof of the net and uh, 1-0. And I, I don't know about you, but I was utterly deflated at that point. Well, I, th- I, th- I thought what was clear as the half went on was we just weren't closing them down enough on those flanks. So uh, you look at Adam Smith, he's not close enough to Reese James to stop that cross going in in the first place. Lewis Cook is out of position. They were being dragged inside a lot of the time, which was leaving space for those uh, wing backs to get forward. And it it hurt us. I thought um, Ake nearly cleared that with the head, uh, threw himself in there in front of Giroud's foot. But yeah, you know, it had been coming. And I think at that point, um, they probably deserve to be ahead because we'd gone right off the boil. I don't think we really had too much after that first 15 minutes that actually looked to, to cause them any issues. No, they were peppering in some chances. There, there was that uh, shot from Mason Mount from distance that looked like it was going wide, but it bounced awkwardly in front of Ramsdale. We managed to get something on it. Um, there was also another uh, incident where Steve Cook cleared just as it was likely to uh, find a Chelsea man at the far post who was going to slot it in. He did well to clear it. And it all felt a bit, um, you know, last ditch defending. But unlike the first 15 minutes when we did go forward, I mean, there was a great run. I think I this is on the YouTube vlog actually where Philip Billing picks it up and he, he's just running down blind alleys he's running down a cul-de-sac and there's no one there to help him um it was it's it was hard to watch um yeah so when their goal did come uh it, it wasn't exactly unexpected that you kind of look back at those early opportunities that we had through especially Philip Billing and think oh my goodness if we just had taken one of those so half time then one nil um, and it, it would have been easy for AC Bournemouth to come out and play exactly the same way as they finished the first half. But, you know, whatever Eddie said in the change room, it worked because they were like a different side. And I've got to give credit to a um, friend of the show, Jack Stacey. I thought he was uh, he was phenomenal. Now, I've got to tell you a story about Jack. Um, I was uh, had a few beers after the game yesterday. I was in Ashley Cross. Played a bit of snooker, actually. I haven't played in ages. I, I think I got a break of about 17 at one point, which I was quite uh, <laughs> proud of. But then um, I went for the blue and then, you know, the white went in the pocket. So, uh, I, you know, I didn't win either frame that we played. Uh, it was myself and a friend called Dan. And then we went into uh, a certain establishment in Ashley Cross. Uh, and I saw Jack Stacey. I won't name the establishment, but it was thirty pound a dance. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. It was. It wasn't that kind of place. Don't worry. It was actually um, Chicken and Blues uh, in Ashley Cross. And uh, I asked him a few questions actually, and uh, he's you know really nice to talk to. And I I complimented him on his performance, the way that he was getting forward. I thought was exceptional. He was timing his runs really well. His delivery into the box was was great. Obviously, he created that Philip Billing chance. And um, like you said earlier. I think he's made that right back position his own, but it was him that was part of um, a, one of the moves that put us 2-1 up. But before that, we got the equaliser, Jefferson Lerma, and it was a corner that Fraser whipped in. And uh, the big Colombian, he got his head on it. I think that's his first goal at Dean Court in a competitive fixture, I think, is it? Um, I agree. Really, really good header as well. Delighted to... Uh... Uh, to see it and it's fantastic to watch it because there's a fan that goes absolutely berserk if you watch that back on the highlights. Oh yeah, the one in green in the North Stand. <laughs> Who is that man? Who is that man? Call in and tell us because it was he, very, very entertaining to watch. He, he's like that crazed ex-partner in the nightclub that, you know, vies for your attention all night and you're, you're just not interested, not looking. And he was trying to flag Lerma down but he, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. And I love the celebration photos that come out. Uh, Lerma was posting them on his Instagram and I always am amazed, Jeff, when you see those photos of players like celebrating, when you look at it, it looks like they're jumping so high. 
It's like sure, surely he's going for some yeah. kind of high jump record. But yeah, some great header. Photoshop, surely. But yeah, no, I thought it was terrific header. And and, it, and in fact, just before that, one, I think Eddie Eddie's uh, on the record is saying, you know, he told the players to press higher, be more aggressive, get more front football. Um, and albeit just before we score the equaliser, Giroud mis- misses a sitter oh, yeah, right. uh, where he doesn't connect, thankfully. And then... Um, it was Lewis Cook that changed it. You know, you get those sort of momentum changes in the game where you think suddenly it's happening for us. Yeah, he, that's right. He, I've got, there were, he plays there were two really, moments. Yeah, and it, Lewis Cook wins the ball, plays a really peachy pass, volleyed pass into yeah, Josh yeah. King's path, which Christensen chases back and puts out for a corner. And that was the first corner. Yeah. Um, that gets cleared, and then Lewis Cook puts in the ball that uh, Billings at the back post gets clipped away by Tamori, I think it is, to then go for the other corner. And it was from that corner that Ron Fraser sticks it in and Lerma, free header, brilliant, brilliant goal. Um, but then again, the second goal is Lewis Cook again. He nutmegs Jorginho on the halfway line, which is delightful to watch. And then pings the ball out to Stacey. Yeah. I think it it gets to Billing on the half turn, turns really sweetly, plays the reverse pass to Stacey, ball across. Callum does one of his Callum, not quite getting there, misses it completely. <laughs> and it passes yeah. through to, to Josh King, who sticks it in. And, and you know, I, I don't know about you, but I went mental at that yeah. time. Um, I, I really great. did. And so, uh, I mean, I could see the goal was coming and I, I don't know what most main standers do, but when I saw that ball coming across, I, I knew that Josh King was going to be on the end of it. So I stood up beforehand and so I blessed some some kind of lady behind me. She was like in her 70s. She said, I didn't see the goal because you stood up. I was like, oh, look, I'm really sorry. But I mean, I'm here to enjoy the moment and I could see the goal was coming. I'm so sorry. Um, but here, you watch it on my phone if you want. No, I didn't say that. I didn't, I didn't actually record it. But um, yeah, it was it was such a good moment. There was a, a mini pause, wasn't there, whilst VAR confirmed. But as far as I was concerned, I mean, I could, I could sort of see that he was level with Stacey you know even the lines on the pitch so I wasn't overly concerned but there is that audible lull isn't there you're celebrating mm. all of a sudden you can see the referee doing something it's not on the scoreboard yet Mike Botto's not said his thing but you know there's something going on and then there's this hush uh, but then you get the second wave when the goal was announced and uh, at 2-1 I was delighted and as I, as I said you know Jack Stacey I thought um, was superb for that goal Lewis Cook a couple of individual moments of genius first as you said that that volley pass with the outside of his right foot and then it was that cheeky nutmeg on the halfway line that set us on the move uh it was nice to see players um having the confidence to get forward and do those things it's lewis cook's a, a bit of an enigma because it's like he's been out of favor but he just needs a run of of games surely because he's better than sermon he's better than than you know dan gosling um yeah. he technically uh you just wonder sometimes why he isn't as involved as he should be yeah he played him in quite a um quite a forward advanced position yesterday i think um that was interesting more the the kind of gosling role um that that gosling hasn't really been doing the last couple of games i don't think so um, I was pleased for him, pleased for him to get a run out, pleased that he made a contribution, you know, it, it wasn't that present in the first half, I didn't think, but second half, those moments really made a difference, and I think that helped the confidence of the team, you know, after that, when we got our noses in front, the players believed, and that yeah. was great to see, they all stepped up their performance for that last sort of 35 minutes just it seems, not it quite seems to be enough philip yeah philip billing it seems as is almost taken the mantle to be that box-to-box midfielder because he's getting um in great defensive positions to clear it um obviously he had those early chances he, he was moving forward he's breaking forward quite a bit um he did have his moments during the game yesterday as as a number of players did but i think you know collectively it was an issue with the way we dealt with things after going 2-1 up I mean we had a great chance to make it three mm. you know, when Callum had that sort of shot on the turn that the keeper saved and yeah. you know, anywhere else again I mean that would have been fantastic had that mm. gone in but it didn't um, and then 
Chelsea did exactly the same as they did the first half. They started pressing. Um, they were, you know, technically better on the ball. When we were winning the ball, we were just pumping it out. Um, it wasn't great. And, you know, they did score eventually. But before that, I mean, Ramsdale was keeping us in the game, wasn't he? Yeah, he made some decent saves. Uh, one in particular that was deflected just in front of him, which he mm. made a fine save. And I thought Jack Stacey actually cleared one from the middle of the six-yard box where he, I don't know how he got it over the bar, but yeah. it, was only, it was only a couple of yards out and sort of smashed it <laughs> high and wide over, which was a terrific uh, clearance. Um, and there were a number of last-minute sort of saving tackles, saving blocks going in. There was one that hit Ake and deflected yeah. inches wide of the post. Oh, my goodness, yeah, just seeing that, I thought, for a minute. Mm. And, and, oh. and, yeah. What do so, you think about the substitutions? Because Josh King was taken off much to... I was in the main stand, so I got a good view. And he had a chat with Eddie, um, who had to put his arm around him and just explain why he substituted him. Um, I thought he was OK yesterday. He's he's obviously a really good outlet to have. Someone who's pacey, you can sometimes hold the ball he, he does better at holding the ball up in the opposition half than his own because back in his own half sometimes he tries to do these stupid flicks that gives away possession and there are a couple of times yesterday where he tried to do these little flicks to get it away when he was you know deep in our own half and he just awarded possession to Chelsea who, who nearly went through and scored but he was taken off Junior Stanislas came on after 68 minutes weird one yeah um I... <laughs> I thought Josh King played really well and he'd only just scored. Um, so arguably could have kept him on for another 10 or 15 minutes because um, he was important in putting pressure on their back four, uh, maybe not offering as, as much defensively. And they did bring William on as well, which kind of overloaded that side. So maybe he was looking for a bit more defensive solidity. Um, in fact, I thought that's where a lot of the Chelsea attacks seemed to be coming from. Rhys James he had a hell of a lot of the ball in the entire game, actually. Um, he's a good crosser. And and they were getting uh, space down that side, so maybe it was to be more defensive. I don't know. Um, Lewis Cook didn't last the game. He, he, he was cramping up visibly, so that was understandable that he went off as well. Dan Gosling, um, wasn't it? Came on for yeah, Gosling came on for him, but you just felt, yeah, you just felt it was coming. Chelsea were getting a lot of space, like I say, down our flanks, and I don't think we were doing as well as we could have done to actually stop the crosses going in, in the first place. So it mm. it it was kind of inevitable. Um, that said, you watch their goal again and you think. Uh, Pedro, nobody picks him up yeah. when he turns and shoots. Um, I mean, we could have done the, better there. Yeah, the ball was played forward to him, and the fact he had time to turn his body and get that shot on goal. I mean, Ramsdale did incredible with the first save and nearly saved Alonso's follow up, but unfortunately, finger tipped it into the side of the netting, and uh, Chelsea went away to all. And you could tell the intent because Alonso was grabbing the ball and they were all running back to their own half. They wanted to win that game. Yeah, they wanted to win that. And Alonso should have had his hat-trick because he missed a header uh, with about a minute to go that, you know, it was easier <laughs> than his second goal, I think. And in fact, that second goal, the one person I would pick out for a bit of criticism was Fraser because he was on his haunches a bit and he wasn't aware that Alonso was behind him, it seemed, waiting for the ball. And if he, if he makes more of a direct effort to get in front of Alonso, it's not such an easy header. Um, so, yeah, we could have lost it 3-2 in the end and that would have been a heartbreak for us. So to come out with a point, I, I was feeling, yeah, disappointed. But actually, Chelsea balance of play, 24 shots against our nine. They could have won that quite easily, actually, yeah. if they had been better finishes. We could have had three points. Uh we got one point. Thankfully, it wasn't pointless. So it's one thing that was pointless and is pointless, I don't know if you see this, Jeff, but in the North Stand, um, obviously, you've got your kind of singing block, which is, uh, well, I mean, m most of the North Stand sing, but that side just next to the East Stand and um, everyone's on their feet in that area. And there's a steward that goes up twice or three times in a match telling everyone to sit down. 
no one takes notice whatsoever and he just go it's so pointless he's doing this week after week uh, obviously they don't do it to the away fans um it just seems a bit bizarre and i'd love an explanation on why they think it's worth the time going up there telling people to sit down mm. and um you know they don't and it happens week after week it's just a repetitive cycle but um those fans along with many made some great noise yesterday i thought the atmosphere was was you know really good obviously there was that natural deflation at one nil but before that i thought it was rocking and then at two one jeff i mean what were your thoughts on the atmosphere yeah it was a fantastic atmosphere i think we we were all heading every ball making every clearance yeah. and and um yeah talk about a siege mentality the fans had it yesterday in spades so Really, really good to see that energy there for the players. And I think the players at the end of the game, I mean, they all sank to their knees. They were absolutely shattered and probably felt that, oh, if only we'd have held on for another five minutes, what an important win that would have been. But that's what we want to see, isn't it? That's what we want to see players fall into their knees, you know, knowing that they've given everything. Um, It's interesting to read some of the five word match reports after yesterday because I was still, I was bitterly disappointed and that, that disappointment was compounded by a certain result later in the evening, which we'll talk mm. about shortly. Um, but some of your five word match reports, Steve Butler close to beating the blues. Uh, Tommy Heffern is poodle better when pressing with energy. Louis, uh, decent performance, 10 cup finals. Why Stanislas over Harry Wilson said, Michael, um, yeah, like we said, maybe it's that Frank Lampard connection. Maybe it's Liverpool next week preparing. Matthew said Fraser in no man's land, as you, as you just said, for Alonso's header to make it two all. Lewis Cook needs game time, said Tim mm. Spencer. Frano should have come on, um, said Matthew. And, uh, you know, as as I alluded to earlier in the show uh, on the podcast, it looked like he, what, he was pulling his kind of socks up for a bit as if he, he was going to get a pick, but then he wasn't. Um, but, uh, you know, he opted... Um, to then make the substitution with, you know, Dan Gosling came on, etc. And thankfully he didn't because Ramsdale looked as though he was injured. And, you know, if he had been subbed off, then it had been uh, let's stick a player in goal and no one would have wanted that. Um, Jew said, don't sit back, just attack. And uh, Michael again said, went downhill without King on. So, yeah, a lot of five word summations there. Um, but you know what? 5.30. Watford play Liverpool. Everyone's thinking around well, Liverpool are probably going to turn them over. What the hell happened at Vicarage Road, Jeff? Mm. I listened to that game on the way home, and um, my God, yeah, uh, uh, Liverpool. You, Liverpool you, were not that great no, against you, West Ham. You did and say I did interview. call it. I did call <laughs> it in did. my interview afterwards that they've got to lose sometime. I didn't yeah. think it was going to be 30 minutes after I spoke to you. <laughs> ideally, uh, ideally that would happen next week. They're gonna, they're gonna be insistent now on. I mean, they're gonna be playing with a lot more aggression and intensity than they ever would have. Perhaps. Wait, I mean, they've got Atletico s- coming up. Say that though. They've got so they've got Chelsea in the FA Cup. I think that's Tuesday night. Uh, that's away. Interesting to see what side he puts out for that. Then us on the Saturday, and then Atletico, I think, is on the following Tuesday or the Wednesday, maybe. Um, and that's the massive game, you suspect. So what is he going to do? Is he going to risk playing a full-strength side on that Saturday, knowing that they've got to beat Atletico Madrid 2-0? Um, Henderson was a big miss for them yesterday. Yeah. Um this is kind of an unofficial preview of uh, the Liverpool game already, isn't it, Sam? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but I saw um, Watford really take Liverpool apart in a way that they did at Anfield, to be fair. You know, they got a lot of chances when they played under Pearson in his first game. And what they do very well, Watford, they're very physical. They don't allow the opposition a lot of time on the ball when they're up for it. And Stars is a good player. I saw somebody saying that Liverpool were worried about coronavirus. They should have been worried about Sol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Quite, you know. Is um, They were off the pace. And I, I think Henderson is a big miss for Liverpool. So when we go up there, we will be on an unbeaten run that's longer than Liverpool's in the Premier League. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I'm loving these stats. And uh, it looks like, uh, you, it looks like you're sort of, I mean, it's a, I don't want to use this word, free hit, 
I mean, we'll yeah. talk about this in the in the actual Liverpool preview. But um, it, how are you feeling after the weekend's results as a whole? Because obviously, all of the bottom three won. We didn't, and now we are. We were two points from safety, and now we're in that in that bottom three, and with a with the hardest match of the season ahead. I mean, I can't help but feel negative, but I, I just want to get certain matches gone out of the way. One of them is obviously. You know, the one coming up against Liverpool, you've got like Man City, Man mm. United. Oh, I'm struggling to be optimistic. And I look at the other matches thinking, well, there are other ones like Southampton are probably going to be up for relegating us as well. And they've probably got the mental capacity to do it. We didn't at their place a couple of seasons ago. But I don't know. I, I have these kind of peaks and troughs with regards to how I feel. And I just want the next match to happen now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it was disappointing that West Ham beat Southampton. They did us no favours. And disappointing that Watford beat Liverpool, a shock result, I agree. However, however, there was uh, a moment before we played Brighton and I said at that time that we needed to get six wins and two draws. We've currently got two wins and a draw, so we need four wins and a draw yeah. from our remaining ten games. So we've, yeah. got to get, we've got to get results from half of those fixtures, right? The big game is not Liverpool. That is a free hit. The big game is the one after that, Palace at home. Right. And and that is the one you think we have got to win that game. Um, the, the we way are we're also... playing, The way we're playing, I think it's some brilliant football at times and they, they aren't technically as good as Chelsea. Chelsea are a, a, a solid side and they were good yesterday. Yeah. Um, Brighton, they desperately need the points and they didn't turn up at home against Crystal Palace I think you know maybe I don't know maybe we've just got the better players than your teams like Brighton and maybe that's just gonna you know the technical nature of our players I mean when you've got uh, you know Jefferson Lerma on form Fraser on form Josh King on form um, and you know like even our fullbacks like Jack Stacey I thought was brilliant yesterday when it all comes together we can give any single team a run for their money and we're looking at certain matches like, okay, like, you know, Everton away or Southampton at home, Newcastle at home, Leicester at home, thinking, okay, that's surely got to be where the points are won. But why not Man United away? Why not get a point at Liverpool? Why not yeah. get a point at Man City? Because we've got players yeah. good enough to achieve that. Yeah. And, and the way that we are playing as well, I mean, aside from the points we've already got, I think the last five games, we've played some decent stuff. We are not playing in the abject way we were around Christmas time. We're playing with positivity. That's a goal that we scored from open play yesterday against Chelsea. That was really well-worked goal. So I think we've got reasons to be positive and optimistic. And I do think there are still 13 points out there for us to get. It's in our hands. Um, it would be lovely to get a big result against United or against City or Liverpool. Pick up a point in one of those three games would be a fantastic boost. But honestly, it's those home fixtures that you look at and you think, that's where we're going to win it. So, yeah, we're not playing as badly as Brighton or Newcastle at this moment in time. And that is also reasons for optimism. If Villa, Brighton, Newcastle, Watford and West Ham are all in the mix with us, I think we've got a chance to, to get out of it still. Brilliant stuff. Well, that is what I like to hear. What What do you think? Where are we going to pick up the remaining points? Love to know what you think in the comments below and let us know what you thought about that performance as well. Disappointed, dejected or kind of relieved with a point in the end. Um, yeah. Where are we going to get the points? Um, if you want to listen to the whole podcast, remember to download it on your app to search back of the net. <coughs> with. But until next time, Jeff, thank you very much. Cheers, Sam. Thanks a lot. Up the cherries. Up the cherries. Back of the net! Back of the net!